everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week's Wargaming Train tutorial, uh, we're stepping it up a notch. We're going for a slightly larger building than what I've built before. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this building is quite a lot larger and there is quite a bit more to this one uh, than any of my previous builds. Uh, now that will mean a slightly longer video today, uh, but I assure you it is um, chock full of uh, tips and tricks and a lot of elements that you'll be able to transfer to your other buildings. Now, I uh, hope you like this one. Uh, please remember to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks very much. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll promise you I will respond to it. Thanks very much, guys. Let's get started. Now, I do just want to quickly point out that this entire build is scratch built with the exception of this one branded item, which is the Army Painter Woodland Tufts, uh, the grass tufts. I find these are uh, really good. They add a nice little dash of color at the base of the building. I've used those before uh, and uh, they're completely optional so uh, if you have them uh, definitely go for it. Now at the start of this I drew up a quick template. I'm using an A3 sheet of foam board here with the paper removed uh, and I've just got myself a small sheet of paper here to draw out my windows and doors and all I'm going to do here is just uh, run around this template uh, pushing my mechanical pencil through just so I can mark that foam exactly where I want all these windows to go. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, you could certainly just draw your measurements uh, out and all your windows and stuff straight onto the foam. I just found this was a little bit easier, uh, let me sort of draw out a bit of a diagram of what it would look like when I was finished. Uh, and once you've done this you'll be able to see those holes poked into that foam board and it will make it quite a bit easier to cut it all out. So you can't see it in the video here, um, but those, foam, those uh, holes are in that foam board now. Now to cut the sides of this building, this is the front face. Um, what I've done is I've just got myself a little piece of scrap wood there with a 45 angle cut on it and I've just screwed in a standard craft blade on there. Uh, now this worked exceptionally well to cut myself 45 angles along the, long ed uh, the short edge of this foam board. Uh, this just allowed me to get some really nice uh, clean seams on the edge of the building. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, it does work out really well. It's really easy to do if you do have your access to, um, you know, scraps of wood like this, or, you know, you've got tools in your shed that'll cut you a small piece of 45 pine wood. Uh, I'd suggest giving this a go because it's really simple. And as you'll see here, um, so long as you've got a new blade in there and you're pretty slow and steady with it, this will give you a perfect 45 degree cut along this one. Now I have cut these by hand before without the use of this little tool. Uh, it's fine, it will still work okay. Uh, you would probably have seen it on my guard tower build where I did it by hand. Uh, it still worked out fine, but there's no way I'd be able to get a clean cut like that just by doing it by hand. So um, just a little trick there if you do have access to that, um, definitely try that out. Uh, no fancy blade, it's just a simple craft knife in there. Uh, now I've gone through and marked out with my craft knife all those uh, windows and doorways. Uh, now you do want to make sure that they are cut correctly before you rip them out just in case you do pull out any extra foam. Uh, you do want these to be pretty nice clean cuts. Uh, once you've cut them you'll be able to just push all these windows straight out. Uh, you would have seen me do that in my first uh, build uh, of the ruined building. Uh, and certainly you could get away with not putting in uh, additional window frames as I do later on in this build if you just want them to be empty. Now I've just got myself here a little piece of uh, packaging plastic. Uh, I can't remember what came with this, but pretty much most of the things you buy these days will be wrapped in this kind of hard, uh, sort of semi-rigid uh, clear plastic. I've just cut myself a little square there so that I can uh, PVA glue that on. Uh, the other edge of the building uh, for this doorway, I'm gonna be making it a garage door. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of cereal box cardboard there, uh, glue that on in exactly the same way. And from there I'll put corrugated uh, paper over that one. Now all these little chunks that we cut out of our windows, uh, you would have seen this again in the, guard, uh, in the uh, ruined building I did before. Uh, we're just going to cut these down into one centimetre strips and these are going to make the window sills for all our windows in the building. Uh, it's really simple to glue these ones in, they should be a really nice fit straight out of the box uh, just because that's where they came from. Uh, all you've got to do is just give them a little squirt of PVA glue uh, and push them into place and they should sit there straight away. Uh, you definitely want to let these dry though um, before you start uh, playing around with adding in the windows if you're going to go down that path uh, just so that you don't uh, end up making more work for yourself by pushing these around and making them une uneven. Uh, but this part of the process was really quick and simple. Just uh, push them in there, uh, lay your, make sure you've got the front of your building facing up and just uh, push them in and lay them flat. 
You can see there I've put the corrugated paper on that uh, garage door over there. Uh, that's just simple uh, craft paper, uh, uh, corrugated paper from the craft store, sorry. Uh, and you'll see now that I've added in these windows. Now I did this window video uh, just yesterday, so it will be up on my channel if you want to see how I did those. Uh, I didn't include them in this video just because it is quite, it is quite a long video as it is. So uh, Now I will have chapters uh, for this video so that you can skip through and find the parts that you want. So just uh, mouse over that progress bar down the bottom and it should show you where to go. Uh, you can see I did the shop front there, all I did was just glue some balsa wood strips onto the front of that clear plastic uh, and just made it look a little bit like a uh, shop front. Now I have broken some of these windows, as you can see some of the frames are broken and not complete, that's just because I'm going to be tearing that away uh, and making the front face of this building a little bit ruined. Now for the fancy pillars I have at the front of the building, uh, what I did was I actually got myself a uh, quick uh, little hand hot wire foam cutter, uh, this one was about $20 on Amazon. Uh, big thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me to get that. Uh, it was really helped out. And now I've just put this in my vise and cut a small piece of MDF there just so I can use this uh, like a tiny little tabletop wire cutter. Uh, it worked really well for that so I'll be doing that again uh, if you've got access to those. Uh, it's a nice easy way to get some uh, pretty clean straight cuts. Uh, now here I'm just making a couple of little signboards for the front of the building. Uh, you would have seen those in the preview shots. Uh, these are just little scraps of foam. Um, I've got XPS foam here just because I had the scrap laying next to me, but you could certainly use um, uh, bits of the foam board that we've cut out already uh, to make this. Uh, just put a little bit of a little bead of glue around the edges of this foam and just put a little frame on it. So the frame does stand out slightly from the thickness of the um, foam here and that is not an accident. Uh, I've done that just to give it a little bit more uh, of a look like it is a shop front sign. Uh, this is pretty simple, just make sure you cut down these little strips of balsa. Um, this is the same balsa I used for the windows. Uh, I've just cut it into about 5mm strips there and just cut it to length and just PVA glued them straight on there. So all this does is just makes like a picture frame kind of effect around it I guess. Uh, and just once you've got those glued on, just put it to the side. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I probably wouldn't use super glue on this. It can, super glue can melt the foam. Uh, PVA glue works fine so long as you're pretty careful with it and you let it dry thoroughly before using it. Uh, to finish off these signs, all I did was I just went into our free um, photo editing software and just printed up some words and uh, put a little bit of colour on the background. I did hit them with washers in the end uh, just to give them that grimy kind of sign look and that worked out really well. Now the front face of my building also has these uh, little sills that run across the front. This just added a little bit of extra detail and what I did for this was just grab myself another piece of foam board. Uh, again this one has the paper on it uh, and all I did was cut some 45s. Um, that just gives it a nice little um, beveled edge uh, that'll uh, give us a nice detail across the front of the building. Uh, so just giving it a couple of swipes with that little jig we made up there uh, gives us a nice little uh, clean 45 degree cut and we will glue those to the front of this building here. So um, you wouldn't need to do this, you could probably just use square cuts if you haven't got the 45 and it would still look good. It gives the building a nice, you know, a couple of extra uh, levels there um, and it sort of pops out a little bit more than just having a straight flat building. Uh, really easy to do. I cut these just a little bit longer than the length of my um, building face there so uh, these do overhang a little bit. Uh, that's also by design just so that I can uh, have these wrap around the building al along the sides. Now with the shop fronts uh, what I decided to do here was actually uh, cover up the exposed edges of the foam board there so I'm just framing the inside of these uh, holes again with uh, this little strips of balsa. Uh, this stuff is really handy to have so if you can find those little sheets of balsa that I use for the windows uh, it does go a long way and these look really nice. They're a nice alternative, uh, slightly cheaper than uh, plastic card, uh, which would also work well. Uh, you could get away with uh, cereal box cardboard or even paper probably for that. Now these uh, tops of these pillars that I'm going to put in here, uh, I've just lined them up to be uh, pretty much uh, centre between uh, those windows above uh, and make sure that they don't overhang the uh, openings for the shop fronts. Uh, gluing this into place uh, with that long strip of foam board that we've got laying across the front. You might find it's a bit easier if you've got something there to weight it down a little bit. Uh, later in the video you'll see I use pins quite a bit to hold things in place. Uh, they'd be perfect for this. 
at this stage though I'm just using some heavier objects just to make sure that there's no bend uh, in that big long strip as I put these uh, pillars in. And once you've got that in place uh, it is wedged up against those window sills so you could certainly glue in that long strip across the front of the building there. What I'm going to do though is just build out these front pillars a little bit and I'm cutting some foam board here at about one and a half centimetres and these will just run straight down from those uh, ornate pillar tops that you can see that I've glued on. Uh, now again I'm just going to measure this up against uh, the space I need to fill. Uh, it's generally a lot easier to do this and you're a lot less likely to make mistakes if you uh, make sure that you've got it uh, fitting in uh, and measure it off the build itself rather than uh, trying to remember how many centimetres it's got to be. All you want is those not to hang over the edge. Now I did pick up some uh, really thin A4 sheets of uh, EVA foam I think this stuff is, so really soft stuff. I think they use it in cosplay quite a bit. Uh, I found this at the craft store and I'm just going to use this to build out the front of the building as well and just add a few more little details in there. Uh, you don't need to use the EVA foam, I just had it on hand and wanted to give it a try. Uh, certainly the strips of balsa would be perfect, uh, also um, zero box cardboard would work here. We're not trying to build it out very far at all. Uh, just a little bit to add more detail. Now I have cut that big section out of the fr front of the building there, that's because I know uh, I don't want that part in there, that's actually going to be part of what's broken away from this building. And I'm also going to just quickly sketch out where I need this uh, ruin to, to sort of go along the front of this building. The reason I'm doing that here is just so that I know uh, how many of these little strips of EVA foam I'm going to need and how many I need at what length. Um, some of this is going to be broken away as I said, so some will be shorter and some will be longer. Um, but I've just sketched on there with a pen roughly where I want to break this off. Now I'm going to cut this roughly uh, a little bit outside of uh, where I've just marked. Uh, the reason for that is uh, I'm going to chip away at this building. I want it to look ruined, so I want to make sure that I don't cut that down with the craft knife right to the edge of where I want it to be broken away. Uh, as you can see here, we peel away quite a bit of foam uh, to get that ruined look on the front face here of these walls. Uh, so you certainly don't want to be uh, cutting that right back uh, to where you want that to be because you'll have to peel a little bit of that out. So once you've got that done, uh, you're ready pretty much now to add in these next details. Uh, now a lot of this stuff is pretty optional, so you don't have to do these. I found it just made the building look uh, a lot nicer, a, a lot more detail there. Um, again, this uh, foam stuff that I'm using glues down perfectly with some PVA glue. Uh, again, don't use super glue, it can melt your foam pretty badly. Uh, but PVA works fine as long as you're patient and wait for it to dry. Uh, give a good spread of these uh, when you put these strips on, no matter what material you're using. You don't want these peeling up on any edges, um, you don't want them warping from the glue. Uh, so make sure you do smear that across with your finger and make sure you've got that, um, you know, make sure you put them in the right place so you don't have to try and peel these off in case one of them's bent or warped. Uh, especially when using this foam stuff, it, it is pretty flexible. So uh, you want to make sure it's nice and straight and neat looking. Uh, and then you can go about and glue on the last of our uh, uh, 45 strips across the front of this building. Uh, that one's pretty ready to go now. Uh, as you can see, um, I'm going to add one more detail. This is going to be some skewers I found in the uh, kitchen supplies. These ones are quite thick. I'm actually going to run these along the bottom of those uh, 45s that we have running horizontally there. Uh, this is just going to give it a bit more of an ornate detail. Uh, now I don't have, uh, I can't sort of cut anything fancier than a 45 with that foam so um, gluing these into place underneath here uh, just kind of really gave it that element that it was uh, you know a kind of ornate uh, structure and it had a little bit more uh, sort of it was kind of fancy I guess because uh, we will paint these up to look sort of concrete or you know a, a part of the building. Uh, now make sure again you do measure these up to the gaps you want to fill, not all of them will be exactly the same size so make sure you're measuring before you cut uh, and measuring off the actual building itself. Uh, when it comes to gluing them in make sure you don't get them all mixed up uh, for that exact same reason uh, and just putting in a bead of glue along all of these little corners here and then pushing up these little dowels uh, or skewers straight into those gaps. This just really dresses up the front of the building and uh, does make it look uh, quite a bit fancier. Really enjoyed this one, nice and cheap solution to this problem. Uh, these dowels are only a couple of dollars at the, uh, at the dollar store, so uh, you should have no trouble finding those. Uh, you can generally find them in a few different thicknesses as well. Uh, I've got a couple of different packets of those now, and uh, I found the thicker ones, if you can get them, uh, worked really well for this. 
Now the one last thing I want to do with those is add one just across the front here. So I've extended that 45 um, beam just across that gap. Uh, and I do want to make sure that I got, uh, I've got one of those dowels ready to go to glue in there. I'm also going to put a few little strips between these windows. Again, that just builds out that detail. Uh, now for the inside of the building, some of this will be visible. So what I'm going to do, uh, and you don't need to use the foam for this either. You could certainly just use some cereal box cardboard here. I'm just going to cover up uh, these um, joins between each of these uh, shop fronts or holes in the front. This just covers up that cardboard as well as the clear plastic that I've got there. Uh, and just makes it look less visible uh, if you are looking through the inside of the building. Uh, just tidies that up a bit. Uh, you don't need to do this, certainly if you're not using the inside of the building at all or don't plan on looking in there, uh, you wouldn't need to do that. So you can see here now this is all pretty much done. Uh, the front of the building is looking pretty good. The only other thing I want to do now is cut down these uh, 45 strips that we've got across the front uh, to give them a nice little, um, again, a 45 degree join there. Uh, the reason for this is that the sidewalls will actually be inset a little bit uh, on this building rather than joining directly to that 45 degree angle. You'll see why that is a little bit later on. Uh, but what I want to do here is just add some 45 degree angle joins for those horizontal strips that I've glued on. So the first thing I need to do is just get a small chunk of this, um, this corner out, as you can see there. Uh, and I'll show you in just a minute the reason for that. Like I said, the, the wall, the side wall will be inset slightly and not joined to that 45, so there is a good reason for this. Uh, now, nothing in this build is really strict. You can certainly go about it any way you like. Uh, if you can't get 45s for the angles, uh, for the corners of your building, you could certainly just have them as uh, butt joints and, and push them up against each other, uh, and it will still work fine. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is just cut that down. As you can see there, I've just got a 45 uh, angle there and I've just eyeballed that. Uh, and the reason being that I want these 45 uh, strips to just kind of wrap around the side of the building here. Now I won't use this uh, wrap around at the back either. Uh, it will just be for the sides. Uh, now I've got the side of my building here. This is roughly an A4 sheet. I pretty much cut my A3, one of the A3 sheets in half. Uh, so this is just an A4 strip of foam board. Again, uh, I'm going to line it up with the corner here just to make sure that when I do carve that out for um, the ruin, I would make sure that the corners all line up. Some of them will be right to the top of the building and some of them will be broken away. Uh, what I'm doing here is just marking out where those 45 strips will travel along the side of the building. Uh, so I do want to make sure that I have that ready to go. Um, and I'm just going to mark these in with my mechanical pencil. Now I've got this lined up with uh, the lines on my cutting mat there, just so that I only need to mark out one side. So you can see there those lines are marked on, and because my, my uh, side walls here will be inset a little bit, what I'm going to do is just mark this up uh, with another piece of foam, uh, just for the very bottom of this building. I wanted this to uh, be a different colour and uh, sort of set out from the side of the building. Again, if you look at the preview pictures, you'll see how this turned out. Uh, this foam looks a little bit different, uh, but it's uh, it just the paper didn't come away from this one the same way. So uh, it does look a little bit different, but it works fine on the building. Uh, no need to worry too much about that. Uh, if you do find you've got damaged foam or anything like that, just try to work it into your uh, final build and you shouldn't have too many troubles. You can see there how that's going to go onto the base of the building there, uh, and I will show you shortly once we glue this on. Again, foam board to foam board PVA glue is, is fine. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got a nice spread of PVA glue over this though, uh, so don't sort of um, don't skimp on the PVA glue. Uh, you want to probably smear this around with your with your finger to make sure that you've got all the edges uh, with the contact point for glue. And I'm also going to give it another uh, quick hit with some PVA glue, a little bit extra in the middle there won't hurt. Now this won't take too long to dry. Um, we're just gonna make sure it's in place, make sure the bottom is straight, and uh, make sure that those 45s uh, that you've cut on the side of that one are exactly where you need them to be. Now I'll show you how this is gonna go together just real quickly here, uh, just do a quick dry fit. Now as you can see, the, uh, the actual wall itself uh, will glue to the inside wall, inside front wall, and those two 45s that we've cut now will join up together nicely. Now the inside of my building, I'm going to be putting some I-beams on here and I'll show you how to make those very shortly. 
uh, but what I need to do is make sure that I've got um, some pillars there to rest those I-beams on so that because uh, I am going to build a, sec a second story floor um, that can be uh, put in and taken out of this one uh, so make sure you've got your measurement for where you want your floor to be and you allow for those I-beams uh, for the thickness of those I-beams so here you can see I've got the uh, inside uh, rear wall and the two sides I've glued them up with those pillars for the I-beams to sit on uh, now I'm just going to do a quick cut out here and uh, ruin up the sides of these buildings and uh, do a little bit of a tear away. Now you've seen me do this before, I just use my fingers here and just take away small chunks at a time. Uh, make sure you don't uh, try to tear away too much and make sure when you do cut it you do allow for the tear away that we're going to do. Now the other front uh, shop front here, uh, I'm going to have this one boarded up. So just using that uh, strip of uh, balsa wood that I had before and a couple of matchsticks, uh, I've just made up a couple of plywood frames, if you like, uh, plywood sheets, I should say, and that's just going to glue straight on there. Now, these cracks I've added to the inside, uh, and I will add to the outside of the building as well. Uh, you would have seen me do that before. I just use a mechanical pencil and run around the building and add these in randomly. Um, generally, you want to make these running away from uh, any of the ruined wall parts. Uh, I, I assume that naturally that's where they would occur. Um, so I've just gone through and done that. Uh, it doesn't take too long. Uh, if you're using the inside of your building, you probably want to make sure that you do both sides of uh, each wall. Uh, now I'm going to add a little uh, doorway to the uh, rear of this building. Now you would have seen me make these up with uh, cereal box cardboard before. Uh, I did them originally with the uh, shipping container build, my very first video. Uh, it is nothing but cereal box cardboard uh, cut down to little strips and glued together. Uh, I'll put a link to that video so you can go check that out. And what I've done here is just cut a uh, doorway slightly smaller than my piece of cardboard um, and added some PVA glue just so that I can slide this straight up into the middle of that uh, foam board and it will hold in place almost under its own, you know, where it is. But uh, I've also added some PVA glue just to make sure that, that doesn't sort of work loose over time. Uh, we'll paint this up a little bit later on, but uh, I have made that uh, double-sided door just uh, like I said because you will be able to see inside this building. Uh, so that's the back, end, uh, the back wall of my building and rather than run those 45s around, uh, all I'm going to do is use some uh, little square strips here. Uh, just cut those with a ruler. Um, I've left the paper on that foam board as well. Now you could certainly do this uh, for the front and sides of the building rather than using the 45 ones I cut earlier. Uh, this still looks great, uh, just adds that an extra level of detail, like I said, and this really just saves you from having you know, blank flat walls. So it's a really quick solution to sort of uh, adding that detail and breaking up the uh, monotony of a just straight old flat wall. Uh, nothing really to this one. Uh, I am going to use some pins here to glue these into place though. Uh, now these strips of foam board that I've cut are very likely to be uh, to bend as you glue them down uh, just because they're so small and flexible uh, but using some uh, sewing pins or something like that to hold them in place works fine. Uh, it doesn't take too long for this glue to uh, stick as well uh, but I will be using these throughout the rest of the build to hold everything together. Uh, it's just a perfect way to make sure this is straight. Uh, now to get these lines across the back and make sure that they do line up with the other strips we've glued onto the front and sides, uh, I would suggest laying down the side of the building next to the rear wall and just carrying through those lines that we marked before. So exactly the same way we did with the, when we moved the uh, lines from the front of the building to the side, uh, we'll just do the same thing with the side to the back. Uh, that's just make sure I know where these need to go and that they'll line up all the way around the building. So as you can see, these look really good. Uh, I will probably break away that section of uh, foam that's uh, going across that uh, ruin there. So this part of the process here uh, is absolutely optional. This is just some detail for the inside walls of the bu these buildings. Um, this is the exact same uh, detail I used on the outside of my previous ruined building video. Uh, it's just a two centimeter strip uh, glued to a one centimeter strip um, to give it a bit of a profile. Uh, I'm using the foam again here, but certainly you could just use the balsa wood uh, and it will work fine. Now these pieces serve no real function, so you can put them wherever you like. If you do add them in there, just line them up. I just lined them up with the, um, the strips on the outside of the building as you can see there. 
Now I have gone ahead and painted the inside of the building because I'm about to do a glue up and I did not think that it would be very easy to paint these walls once they are all put together. Um, so you can see I have painted the inside of the building. I've painted this exactly the same way I did with the guard tower. Uh, now I do have a video on how to paint this concrete look and I'll put a link to the top of the video for you. Uh, the way I'm going to glue this up uh, is I'm just going to be using some PVA glue. I'm going to use some uh, sewing pins to hold it all together and I'm actually going to glue the two corners first. So uh, what I'm going to have is the front and one side and the back and one side and then I'm going to go ahead and try and glue that together. So uh, now make sure you do have the right walls connecting to the right walls when you do this. Uh, it can be quite easy to mix these up and make a mistake uh, but because the ruins on mine kind of all line up here, uh, it's pretty simple. I uh, didn't make too many errors during this process. Uh, now, inserting the pins is, uh, there's nothing really to it. You, what you can do is um, just try to put them towards where there's joins and stuff, or where you've got extra details, you can just sort of uh, try and insert them there, so that way you won't see the holes later on. Uh, but it really doesn't matter, these pins are pretty fine. They're not gonna make uh, too much of a mess of our building. Now try to make sure you give this a good amount of time to dry. You do want to line these up on a lines on a cutting mat if you can, just to make sure that these stay at a 90 degree angle. Uh, and like I said, make sure that these uh, give them plenty of time to dry because we are going to be moving these around when we try to glue these next two corners together. Now the process for gluing these together is exactly the same as what we've just done. Uh, we're just going to add a bead of glue to each uh, edge and then pin it in place. Uh, there's nothing too much to worry about here other than making sure that those all stay at a 90 degree angle when you pin them in and have that glue set. So once you've got this ready to go, uh, we'll put these pins in. Uh, like I said, make sure you leave it a good amount of time to dry uh, because from this point on, uh, when we move this, it is going to be a solid structure now. So uh, I leave the pins in here for quite some time after it dries. Uh, I've got some weights around the outside there just to make sure that the building doesn't warp and that I do keep those 90 degree angles on each corner. Now to sort of help the structure a little bit, especially at the top side, I'm just going to add a little bit of a roof element. So this is just a bit of corner uh, scrap foam. Uh, all I've done there is just uh, broken it away to give it a roof. Uh, and I'm just going to add some flashing to the top edge of these walls just to cover them up a little bit. Now I've cut these roughly, just eyeballed that 45 degree angle that you can see there. Uh, and just made that little edge that's going to sit right on the top. Uh, at this point I'm using hot glue, uh, just because it's not going to be seen, uh, it's, I'm, I'm happy to move forward a bit quicker on these elements. Uh, yeah, the hot glue will work fine, just make sure you don't melt too much. Now, when it comes to gluing on these side uh, strips here, I have put some pins in place to try and keep these um, steady and straight when they go on. I'm using hot glue again, uh, just because I want this to go a little bit quicker. These I can't sort of sit this building on its side or I don't want to anyway. Um, so I'm just using some pins at the bottom of those lines we drew. Uh, that'll give something for these strips to sit on as I put them in place. Now when it comes to the base, I have this large piece of foam board here that I'm going to use. I've just marked out the inside of the building so I know exactly where that's going to sit on that foam board. And just using my mechanical pencil, I'm just going to go through here and add uh, some one inch squares. Uh, now this is probably not so much for playability as just it is for the look of the building. Uh, I've left one side without the squares because that's the garage side. Now we're going to build our I-beams. Now this is really simple. I've got some uh, cardboard here. Uh, I think uh, in America they call this chipboard. Uh, it's just you know slightly thicker cardboard. Uh, and I've cut this down to about five mil strips. And as you can see, gluing this together, we're going to be able to create these I-beams really easily. Now I have cut these to the length. Um, so I've measured out the inside of the building again. Um, from front to back and I've cut these strips down to exactly that length so I want these to kind of wedge in there and using a little bit of a uh, couple of little spots of hot glue uh, on the top and bottom um, I put these in a place and I will use some PVA glue to strengthen these up that hot glue doesn't hold too well over time it doesn't uh, you know especially with this stuff uh, it seems to kind of it's either really messy with a lot of it or it's really kind of weak with just a few spots so what I do is put a few spots on there um, put these all in place to get that I-beam look and then I just uh, run a bead of PVA glue uh, right down each edge and I just push that into place with a scrap, you know, paddle pop stick or, or a piece of balsa or something just to um, smear that PVA glue into those corners. Uh, this gives it a lot of extra strength down the track. Um, it doesn't leave us with heaps of messy hot glue um, beads running everywhere. 
So it's a great idea if you've um, got some of this cardboard handy. If you haven't, you could certainly use the balsa again. Um, this stuff worked fine for me. Uh, I was finally able to find some of this chipboard stuff around at the uh, office supply store. Now I've painted those up as well, just a, a red brown, uh, and I have put them into place there. They're not glued at this stage, um, I've just wedged them in. The reason I've done that is because I'm going to glue this down to the base now. Uh, and I want to make sure that those walls are straight and not warped inwards, uh, which they can sometimes tend to do once you've painted one side of the foam board. So I've just wedged a couple of I-beams in there before I glue this to the base here. Uh, now again, I have marked out that base exactly where it's got to go, where this building's got to sit, uh, but I am going to use PVA glue for this step just because it gives me a bit more working time and it ensures that I've got it in the right place and everything lines up properly. Now using these little strips of 45 again, um, or 45 angle, um, this is what's going to cover up the edge, that exposed 45 from the front and rear of the building that we left uh, in these corner joins, uh, and I'll show you what we do here. So uh, I've just measured the distance between each of these horizontal uh, strips, and what I'm going to do is cut these down, and these will sit in perfectly against that. Uh, 45 that we cut on the front face and the rear face of the building so as you can see here um, I'll just be able to wedge these into place a uh, little bit of glue and that'll give us a little bit of a corner pillar I guess or a corner uh, post effect in there for those I just used hot glue to put them in place and next I'm just going to add in a couple of little inner walls these are mostly ruined uh, this is entirely up to you whether you even uh, do this step or not. Um, I only use this one larger wall here for the back. Uh, again, this serves no real purpose in the building other than for aesthetics, you know, to make it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, and I've used a couple of small strips here as well. So one large one for the back, a little one for the front here near the front door. And I've also got one that's kind of a standalone one in there. Uh, and I'll show you how this all comes together uh, very shortly. This part of the process can be done with hot glue, uh, I didn't need PVA glue, I don't really need a lot of working time for this, I know exactly where they need to go and I'm happy for them to glue straight down. Uh, you can use plenty of, plenty of PVA glue here, it's going to be inside so if you've got ex excess that squeezes out uh, it's not going to be very noticeable. I probably would paint those walls up before you glue them into place though so keep that in mind. Uh, it can be hard to get in there with a brush or an airbrush later on down the track. And that's all I'm going to add for those. So you can see there now I've added in some ruins. Uh, some you know chips of rock um, those concrete pillars are the ones we made uh, in the video last week I've just hot glued those into place and then hot glued those uh, I beams in I've broken one of the I beams as well or bent it down just just to add some more detail uh, there's nothing complicated about that part of the process so I didn't include it in the video just because it is simply gluing in those uh, those concrete pillars and then putting the I beams on top now I have cut some floors here, uh, These I wanted to leave these as removable just so that I could get in and out of the building nice and easily. Um, all you need to do is make sure you've got some 45s, uh, uh, sorry 90 degrees on those um, corners for some of these so that they just sit in place nicely. Uh, you can use magnets on your I-beams if you've got them uh, just to hold these in place a little bit better, I don't think it really matters. Uh, but I've also now gone and added some uh, little rocks around the outside of the building, so some small bits of rubble. And I'm also going to put in these army painter tufts, uh, these grass tufts. Uh, I really like these because I get a, you know, a few different sizes. Uh, now for the rocks there, I've used um, just scraps of foam cut down and uh, you know chipped away at those and just PVA glued them to the base. When it comes to these tufts of grass, up against the sides of these buildings, I do like to cut them in half just so that these sit nice and snug against the building or against the rocks. Uh, I did use a variety of these, so a variety of different sizes. Some of them I left um, as full tufts and glued down, uh, but a lot of these, especially like I said, when it's up against the side of the building, what I'll do is cut them down just so that I've got a straight edge to glue um, against the wall. Uh, these worked really well and they're really nice to add a little bit of extra colour into the build. So usually with these types of ruined buildings they're very sort of grim and grimy um, but having a nice little flash of colour on there really does make a difference. Uh, so thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you if you've stuck it out to the end here. Uh, please remember to hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this one. I'll have a new video out in a couple of weeks. I appreciate it. Thanks guys.